Howdy y'all, it's your girl Wrecking Cat. I'm gonna be starting a Let's Play of one of my favorite games, Let's Go Eevee. But I'm not just wanting to play it casually, where's the challenge? Where's the fun? Where's the drama? So lastly, I'm gonna be completing what's called a Nuzlocke challenge. Now you may be wondering, but Cat, what even is a Nuzlocke challenge? Well, gentle viewer, it's the heartbreaking version of Pokemon games. If you're looking for the too long dinnery version, aka the cliff notes of this video, I linked a copy of my Google slideshow here in the description below. But for those of you who are ready to learn how to be the very best, the best there ever was at a Nuzlocke Let's Go Pokemon, here is our table of contents. I'm going to lay out for you the catching rules, the battling rules, and the gameplay rules. Beginning at the basics, there's actually catching the Pokemon. So in a Nuzlocke challenge, you are only allowed to catch the first Pokemon that you encounter in each area of the game. So here's our cute little avatar, and she's just beginning her adventure down here in Route 1, just above Pallet Town. In most Pokemon games on handheld devices, the Pokemon would be hidden, and while you're walking along, you would encounter a Pokemon not knowing what it was until it showed up on your screen, like this. A wild Rattata appeared. So, <clears throat> this is not the case for Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee games. The Pokemon are visible in what's called the Overworld. Here, you can see two Bidgeys and a Rattata milling about in the area. Each point of interest has a different set of Pokemon that will appear there for catching. In the case of Route 1, there's Bellsprout, Rattata, and Pidgey. In my example, I am planning on catching this Pidgey here. So back to the screen, you can see that Pidgey, but what I missed is there is a Rattata right back there and he runs into us on our way to Pidgey. Boom, a wild Rattata appeared. Now I have to catch that Rattata since it's my first encounter for the area. With Rattata successfully caught, I can't catch any more Pokemon in Route 1. This continues for every single route or area that we travel through. Only one Pokemon per area. Now, with this rule comes our first clause, which is the dupes clause. If the first encounter in any area is a Pokemon that's already been caught, or in the evolutionary chain as one I've caught, then I can choose a different Pokemon to encounter. I mean, look, that Rattata I caught shows up in 17 places. Nuzlocke rules allow you to override the first encounter with this one clause. So we're on our merry way, do 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 do, moving on to Route 2. In Route 2, you can encounter a total of five different Pokemon. We have the same Route 1 encounters. You have Bellsprout, Rattata, and Pidgey, but also now we have Weedle and Caterpie. All of the Pokemon are fair game to catch, except for Rattata, since we've already caught one and it falls under the dupes class. So I wish to catch Caterpie. But once I do that, I can no longer catch any Pokemon in that route. If I wanted to catch a Pidgey or Bellsprout, I could. Just because I didn't catch them in Route 1 or Route 2 does not mean I'm not allowed to catch them later on. Continuing our first encounter in dupes clause rules, we move into the Viridian Forest, where we can encounter a plethora of Pokemon. We would not be allowed to catch Rattata or Caterpie in this area, as they fall under the dupes clause. And because Metapod over here is in the evolutionary chain of Caterpie, we also would not be able to catch Metapod. So I would choose one of the Pokemon that I can encounter. Now, here's the kicker. If my encounter flees, I'm unable to catch any Pokemon in that area. So if this little Psyduck here, I'm going to wring his little neck, if this Psyduck decides to run away, then I'm just S-O-L. Under our catching rules, we also have grinding, and I'm not talking about the fun kind. Let's go Eevee and Pikachu again were made entirely different from traditional games. You don't fight Pokemon to catch them, trainers give you minimum XP, and you start the game off with 50, I repeat, 50 Pokeballs. Really? You get the most XP from catching and combo bonuses. A combo bonus is when you catch the same Pokemon back to back. But to keep it a fair challenge where I can't just farm experience, I can chain the Pokemon I catch in an area until the chain breaks. So for the Caterpie that I count on Route 2, 
I can continue catching it, catch some more, and continue catching it until one of them runs away. This breaks the chain, and I can't catch any more Pokemon after that one runs. I can't use any of those extra Pokemon either, and they must immediately be transferred to Professor Oak where he grinds them into candy. <laughs> Yum. Some quick other clauses are that I can catch any shiny Pokemon that I see. You can see the difference in the shiny Pokemon even in the overworld, and I can use them either if they are the first encounter or, you know, I can sacrifice two of my usable bonds to the Pokemon gods. The last clause for catching is that I can catch legendaries, but they are not allowed to be used. I mean, for obvious reasons, right? They're badasses. After our catching rules, there's battling. The rules for battling are pretty simple. I have to play with what's called battle type set, which means I don't get the opportunity to change Pokemon when my opponent sends out a new one. Say I have out a cute little Ivysaur here. My opponent is about to send out a Charizard. Oof. And it would typically let me change to a different Pokemon for free. It would say, your opponent's about to send out a Charizard. Would you like to choose a different Pokemon to send out? And you'd be like, heck yes! Oh my gosh, Charizard's gonna kill my Ivysaur! But eh, that's not the case. The Nuzlocke says no. It's a challenge, <laughs> not a joyride. Now for the fun part. Fainting. If a Pokemon faints, they die. The dead. End of story. No nurse joy, no reviving. Nope, you gotta set up a gravestone and mourn your losses because there will be a lot. There are two clauses that I'd like to address underneath battling, beginning with your partner moves. Now, Let's Go has two different versions. You have Pikachu and you have Eevee. In those two versions, there are moves that are specific for only your partner Pokemon. And those moves are, well, simply stated, they're overpowered. This move always goes first. It's always a crit. It's so broken. Now, frankly, it is a mechanic that is unique to the game, and I believe it's fair to use at least one of these moves, but only one of them. Finally, after battling, we have soft resetting. This is whenever you save the game and then you have to completely close out of the software on the Switch. This prevents unfair catch combos, resetting to save a Pokemon you've lost in battle, resetting your first encounter, etc. Battling is going to be the most exciting part of this playthrough. Our last set of rules have to do with the gameplay in general. So first and foremost, if you black out, aka all of your Pokemon faint and die and you're running around screaming like a chicken with your head cut off, then that's game over. That's it. You have to restart the game. You have traveling partners. So these are the Pokemon that can either walk behind you or you can ride on them. And that Pokemon must be the first one that's in your party. I mean, they're the Pokemon that's out of the Pokeball. So obviously if you get into an encounter, they're already gonna be out of their Pokeball. They're the first one who is going to fight. Our second rule for gameplay tells us that we must nickname our Pokemon that we use because they are our children. They are our precious. We must form a bond so that when they die, it shatters our souls. Remember, the stakes are high. This is a challenge, after all. Lastly, there are other encounters that you cross in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, like NPCs wanting to trade their Lolan region Pokemon for your Kanto region. There's a Snorlax taking a big ass snap you gotta wake up, among Officer Ginny asking you to keep in line this hooligan Squirtle, cause apparently she can't, among other shenanigans like these. I count these as separate from the catching norms laid out, so I believe that you can use them if so desired. Those are all the rules. Now all you gotta do is beat the Elite Four to win. So, dare I say it, brave adventurer, let's go.